we're doing today is basically talking about how arithmetic and stuff works on a computer. And in order to do that, we've got to first learn a different way of counting. Okay, so uh, last time when we were talking about the Boolean logic stuff, uh, there was one point where we made a truth table and it had like eight or 16 lines, I don't remember. Uh, and I wrote down uh, the, the various patterns for the inputs in a particular order. And I told you guys, hey, I'd explain why I did it in that order. That's today, okay? So, um, how do you count? So if I write, for example, this number down, what does that mean? Yeah, okay, so it's the year Wabash was founded. Okay, that's that's sort of, you know, I didn't just pick this number out of a hat. Okay, but if we just look at this as a number and not care that it has anything whatsoever to do with Wabash, what does it mean? Okay, how do you know it means 1,832? Yeah, so the position of each number determines its value Okay, and we call this place value, right? So this means one times a thousand plus eight times a hundred plus three times ten plus two times one, right? And you guys don't even think about the fact that that's true. You just look at it and you just know how big it is, okay? But back in, oh, I don't know, maybe in elementary school, did you guys ever, you know, sort of write it like this, thinking of it like, oh, I've got 1,000, or did, um, I remember uh, in elementary school, we had these, like, wooden block things, and there'd be, like, a, a little tiny wooden block, and that was a one, and then there was, like, a wooden rod that had 10 of those, and they were kind of marked off, and then a, a, a square plate of wood that was gridded, and that was 100, and then there was this big cube that was 1,000. Do you guys remember those? From Okay. Um, anyway, so like when you're teaching children how to read these, these numbers, you, you have them think about it that way. But eventually it just becomes automatic. You know that 1832 is 1,832, right? You just don't think. Okay. So the position of the digit determines its place value. And this is why we only need 10 symbols to represent any number, okay? The, the, the digits zero through nine, and then where they are in the number tells us their value, okay? And uh, if you've ever tried to do like Roman numeral counting, for example, right, what's the problem with Roman numerals? Well, there's many problems, but one of them is the position that the letter is written in doesn't tell you anything about its value, right? So every Super Bowl, right, is numbered with Roman numerals, and it's an infuriating system, okay? Um, all right, so why do we use 10 digits, right? So we have 0 through 9 as our available digits, 10 of them. Why 10? Like, who made up that rule? Huh? Some old guy. Well, but there's a very good reason for 10. We have 10 fingers, okay? Right, that, that's a pretty logical way of doing it. Now, there is other than that, no reason to pick 10 over any other base of number, okay? Uh, the Mayans, for example, um, used a base 20 system uh, where there would be 20 digits, zero through 19, and they would each need their own special symbol and you could represent numbers just fine that way. And that may seem weird to us because we're all used to base 10, but if you had been taught base 20 from childhood, you would think base 10 was weird, right? It's just what you grow up with. Okay, and fortunately, uh, the, the whole world uses this base 10 system, and that's great because we can all communicate numbers with each other. But there's an exception, or maybe a couple of exceptions, of things where we don't count quite in base 10. Can anybody think of one of them? Okay, well, yes, binary, which is, of course, the whole point of a computer science class. So we'll get to that, right? 
Uh, but let's say something that's not computer related that we use something other than base 10. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, actually, and this is kind of a vestige of, of old English. So uh, dozen, right, the idea of, of, of things being in units of 12, um, the, uh, um, uh, and, and in fact, the, the way we speak counting in English, right, think about the numbers 1 through 12, you know, you get 10, 11, 12, and then what's the next one? 13, it switches systems there, okay? So we have special words for 11 and 12. Other languages do that switch at different places. So for example, in Spanish, what's 15? 15, not, and, but what's 16? Diez y seis, right? So it's a, the system switches there between having a special word for 15 versus 16, which is just 10 and six, literally, right? French, it switches from 16 to 17, which is kind of interesting that it's different than Spanish because they're both Romance languages. And I don't know what it is in Italian or um, Portuguese or anything, but um, yeah. So anyway, like in English, we have this sort of vestigial notion of, of 12 being a good counting unit and we still use it, right, for, well, you buy eggs that way. Is there anything really else that can, well, okay, eggs, chicken wings, um, yeah, pack, like a 12-pack of soda, uh, and if any of you say pop, you can just walk right out the door, okay? Where I'm from, it's a soda or Coke, and then Coke is a generic. What kind of Coke do you want? Nah. <laughs> you Yankees, how many of you guys say pop? Door's right there. <laughs> so, um, yeah, anyway. So, yeah, chicken wings, sodas, eggs. Um, I don't know. Well, maybe something like uh, oysters, right? You buy a half dozen or a dozen. Um, anything else that we count that way? Uh, okay, yeah, bagels, donuts, usually half dozens in that case. Although, for some reason, like, sometimes bagels come in, like, fives not sixes, at least I've seen, uh, which is kind of weird. Uh, and then don't get me started on like hot dog buns versus hot dogs, right? Like there's eight hot dog buns, but only six hot dog, right? Or whatever in the pan. You're like, wait, what? Why would anybody do this? Um, forcing you to buy the least common multiple of them and having like hot dogs coming out your ears. Um, okay. So, so yeah, we've got, you know, other counting systems. Uh, for for those things, uh, what about something else besides dozens or different different counting that's not quite base ten? You guys use it every day. What about time? Right? How many seconds are in a minute? Not ten or a hundred, right? It's sixty. Okay. Well, why sixty? That's kind of a weird number. Um, or, well, why? Well, how many degrees are there in a circle? 360. Well, that's a weird number to pick, right? Why would you pick that? Um, why not make the circle have 100 degrees and then, I don't know. Um, I mean, we could do it that way, right? In fact, I think the French actually tried this in, um, uh, during the, you know, in the early 19th century of having like a metric time system and metric angle measurements, and it was a complete disaster. So fortunately, we, we don't do that. Um, but why 360? Why, why is that actually a good choice for the circle, and who made that up? It's actually ancient, like ancient Mesopotamian, like 4,000 4, years ago, right? The very beginnings of mathematics, as we might call it. But why is 360 actually a good choice? Yeah. Okay, it happens to be close to the number of days in the year, right, 365 and a quarter. Um, the other benefit of it is that 360 is dividable in lots of different ways, right? So it's sort of the opposite of being a prime number. Prime numbers have almost no factors. This 360 is a number that has lots and lots of different ways of dividing it up. You can divide it into 
fours and threes and seven or well not seven but nine and right there's lots of divisors of it um and that's kind of convenient so for example if you divide it into 24 which is the number of hours in a day uh then that's 15 per 24 and so well we can't see it today because it's cloudy but the sun would move 15 degrees across the ecliptic uh every hour that's kind of handy knowledge, right? Um, yeah, so we still use this. And the ancient Mesopotamians uh, used a counting system that was base 60, okay? But they didn't have 60 separate symbols. They used basically uh, the same way we do where we say, okay, how many seconds is it? 37 or whatever, right? They would write three and seven, but it was in a place so you knew that that was the seconds and this was the minutes or whatever, okay? So they built their whole arithmetic system around that way of writing, um, not just for timekeeping. That's basically the only time we do it. Um, it works, right? I mean, just as good of a system as any. Um, okay, um, so yeah, so, the, so you guys already are used to the idea of having a different counting system than the base 10 system, right? Time or dozens. Uh, okay, so uh, where we want to go with this is to do this in binary, okay? And there, there's two related systems uh, for computer stuff. Uh, we'll start with the binary one. Okay, and I think, um, yeah, we'll start with the binary one. Okay, so let's, how many different patterns are there if I have four uh, binary things, right? So four things, it could be a one or a zero. We call these bits, by the way. A bit stands for binary digit, okay? So in the same way that like one, eight, three, and two, each of those are a digit, well, we'll call a one or a zero. Any individual one of those is a bit. Okay, so if I have four bits, how many different patterns can I write down of ones and zeros? A moment more. It's 16. Okay, how do I get 16? Uh, no, four factorial is 24. That's a different thing, huh? It's two to the fourth. Okay, and why is two to the fourth the correct answer? Well, this would be like, how many times or how many different outcomes are there if I ask you to flip four coins? Well, how many outcomes are there for the first coin? Two. Second, third, and fourth, also two, two, two. And do they have anything to do with each other? Like, does the first coin flip influence the second? No. In no way, shape, or form does that, is that true. Um, and so you just multiply the different combinations, and hence you get two times two times two times two, which is 16. Okay. So... There are 16 possible patterns. Let's write all 16 down. And I'm doing this in a very logical order. Which I'll elucidate more here in a moment. Okay, so there's the first eight. And here's the second eight. Okay, so let's look at all eight of these and kind of see why is this order uh, the correct order, okay? Imagine you wrote down the numbers between zero and 999. Okay, that'd take a while, yes. But what would you do? You'd start with zero, 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 or well, say three zeros. Then you do 001, 002, 003, 004, and so on. You'd keep going through that last digit until you hit nine, and then what happens to the next one? You increment the next digit by one and then start the whole process over again. It's exactly the same here, okay? So the very last bit can either be a zero or a one. So I do zero, one, zero, increment the next one, one, and then the, the pattern continues, okay? Um, so, 
but the other way I can think about this is um, with 1832, what were the place values? Okay, so the two was in which position? The one's place, okay? The three was in the two's place, or sorry, tens place, the eight was in the hundreds place, and so on, okay? So if we're gonna follow that motif, what is the right hand most position? This is still the one's place, okay? But what's the next position over? It's no longer the tens place, but rather the two's place. And this is the four's place, and this will be the eight's place, okay? Now let me write down kind of why I'm thinking that. What's another way that I can write a thousand? I can write it like this. Right? So do you guys agree that that's the same thing, just a different notation? Okay, so notice that the place values increase in the, the base 10 decimal system that we use in powers of 10. Okay, And if I wanted to uh, go up, if I wanted to then talk about the place values in binary, what would they be? Not powers of 10, but rather powers of two okay uh and if i did this with like time for example it's really a power of 60 right so how many seconds are in a minute 60 how many of those are in an hour another 60 so that's powers of 60. now with time obviously we we have 24 hours in a day not 60 when I mean, we could have done it that way but um that the pattern kind of stops there but uh, but does that make sense? Okay, so instead of it being powers of 10, it's powers of 2. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so let's go through these then. Well, 0, what is that? 0, okay, so that's easy, right? This one, the, the second one on the list, is 1, right? It's a 1 in the 1's place and zeros everywhere else. Then what's the next one? Where's the 1? It's in the two's place. Okay, so this is two. This one, the next one is three because it's got a one in the two's place and a one in the one's place. Okay, next. Four, five, six, seven. Okay, you guys convinced? No? All right, let's take seven. Okay, this one is in which place? The one's place, okay? This one is in the two's place, and this one is in the, okay, what's four plus two plus one? So it's seven. Oh, why is this one four? Ah, okay. So, uh, yeah, I, I see the question. Okay, what are the, the place values here? The place values go up by powers of two, okay? So in the base 10 system, you have the ones place. I'm going to think of that as 10 to the zero. Then I have the tens place, which is 10 to the first. The hundreds place, which is 10 squared. And so every time you move one spot to the left, you go up by a power or a factor of 10 in our normal counting system, right? Okay, so accordingly, if we're going to do all of this with only two digits, zero and one, all of the place values go up by powers of two, okay? So why the fourth place? Well, what's two squared? Four, okay? And then what's the next place value? Eight, okay? So we have, let's go back to our seven. I have one in the one's place, one in the two's place, one in the four's place, and zero in the eight's place. Okay, and four plus two plus one is seven. Okay, are we convinced? Yeah, okay. So same thing over on the right. Okay, what's the next one? Eight, nine, 10, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Okay, so does that make sense? All right, so when I wrote the, the stuff in that order, um, I didn't, like, it may have seemed like I was just randomly doing it, but there was really a method to the madness. That's the method, okay? Just counting. It's not 
that hard, is it? Yeah. Um, I mean, you're kind of, today is sort of the welcome back to elementary school day of computer science, right? And then, th then we'll get into actual, like, real arithmetic. Okay, so. So is there any, let's take 1832, right? It's only a four digit number. It's not all that big, right? Could I write down numbers basically as large as I could choose, right? I could keep going with this all day long and every new place value is just another power of 10 or in the case of binary, a power of two. Um, okay, now, the unit of measure for these, so these are all four bit numbers, okay? Um, and then a, a group of four bits, the shorthand name for this is called a nibble, N-Y-B-B-L-E, okay? And I'm not making that up, Liam, I promise you, okay? So one bit, four bits equals one nibble, and eight bits, does anybody happen to know? which would be two nibbles, obviously, but what's the unit for this? It's a byte with a Y, okay? Which, um, has anybody been to that place a uh, little bit south of town that's called Mexican Bites, B-Y-T-E-S? Uh, when they were building it before it was open, I was like, okay, what is this going to be? An internet cafe, a taco joint, like what... <laughs> because it, they spelled it B-Y-T-E instead of B-I-T-E. And so I figured there'd be something computer related. Um, no, they just spelled it cool. Um, anyway, so yes. So if I had a very large number of bits put together, okay, uh, would it be kind of annoying to actually write down all the ones and zeros? Yeah, because it might be a really, really long sequence of them, okay? And so we have a shorthand system for this, which we call hexadecimal, okay? So I'll show you that in just a second. Um, <clears throat> hexadecimal works by basically taking things a nibble at a time, okay? So each nibble is going to correspond to one hexadecimal symbol, and... The hexadecimal symbols are, for all of this are very, very logical. There's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, what's the problem that I'm about to run into? I'm out of digits. I'm out of symbols. Okay, even though the value of that is 10, I don't want to write down 10. I need another symbol, and I want it to be a single symbol. So what the heck, what options do I have at this point? I can start using the alphabet, and that's exactly what we do, okay? So A, B, C, D, E, and finally F. Okay, so you can think of these hexadecimal, okay, so the stuff written in orange, as being a abbreviation for the four bits that you see. But we can also do this and think of it as its own arithmetic system, just like base 10 or base two. Okay, and that I'll, I'll do in a second. Okay, so for right this instance, like I said, you can think about this as an abbreviation. Okay, all right, is that okay? Um, and you know, why do we use the letters A through F as opposed to some other, I don't know. Somebody made that up a long time ago, and um, we're just stuck with that system. Okay. Good? Okay. So let's write 1832 in hexadecimal and also in binary. Okay. All right. So let me take the number 1832. Okay. And if I want to write this in hexadecimal, then I need the following place values. Okay, so what are the place values in a base 10 system? 10 to the zero, 10 to the first, 10 squared, and so on. Okay, in binary, it's two to the zero, two to the first, and so on. So hexadecimal has 16 symbols, so everything is gonna be in base 16. 
Okay, do you guys buy that part first? Okay, so 16 to the zero is my ones place. Always have a ones place. 16 to the first is my 16s place. And then 16 to the second is, happens to be 256. So I'll have my 256s place. Okay, good. All right, so I need to take 1832 and write it this way. Well, in order to do that, I need to know, well, how many 256s fit into 1832? So think about that for a second. I don't know, maybe bust out a calculator if you need. It happens to be seven, okay? And it's seven point blah, blah, blah. And the remainder happens to be 40. Okay, I know that because I did it this morning and I remember it, okay? Um, okay, so if I had divided 1832 by 256 on a calculator, I'd get seven point whatever. And then I'd say, okay, well, I can't have point whatever. So I'll do uh, seven times 256. How much is left over? If I subtract that from 1832, I'd get 40. So that's my remainder, okay, uh, upon doing this division. Okay, and so what that means is what am I going to put in my 256's position? The seven. Okay. Okay, and then we just need to continue this process until we hit the ones place and then we're done. So, uh, how much do I have left at this point? 40, okay. How many times does 16 go into 40? Twice, okay, with how much left over? Right, so 40 is 2 times 16 plus 8 as the remainder, okay? And so accordingly, I put a 2 in the 16's place, okay? What's our remainder now? How many times does 1 go into 8? Well, 8 times, so this one's easy, right? That's it, okay? And you know you've messed up if you ever have more as your remainder, um, then, or when you do the division, you get 16 or bigger, okay, uh, at number of times, right? The biggest you should ever get as the, the, the when you do the division is 15 or F. Okay, so does that make sense? You write F, exactly, yeah. So, um, in fact, maybe I should have chosen a different number to exhibit that, but, um, yeah. Uh, and, in fact, I'll, we'll do another one where... We'll use the, the letters just to make that clear. Uh, okay, so 728 in hexadecimal is the same as 1832 in base 10. Okay, now, we have a bit of a problem, okay, in that if I just wrote 1832 down on a piece of paper, how would you know whether or not I meant that as 1832 is hexadecimal or 1832 is decimal? Would you know? Okay, what would you probably assume? You'd probably assume it was decimal, right? But if I wrote down 728, which is here something we've done in hexadecimal, you would not know whether or not it was decimal or hexadecimal, right? Okay, so we need some sort of way to signify which system we're using, okay? And one way that I'll do this or, um, is I'll write the base in English as a subscript, or I could do, say, 728 in hex, okay? The other way that I could do this for the hex is I'll write 0x728, okay? So 0, lowercase x, and then the actual number. Uh, that one I didn't make up. It's a pretty standard one uh, to see things in hex with 0x in front of them. Okay. Um, yeah, so in computing stuff, though, not always does it actually have the 0x in front of it, and you just have to know that it's hexadecimal. Now, if you see A through F somewhere in the thing, 
Well, you know, it's definitely not base 10 because we don't use that in base 10. Um, but uh, yeah, so for example, um, let's take uh, this over here. Let me blow it up a little bit. So it's okay. So this is something I was doing uh, for my my other class. I have here what's called a hex dump of a particular file. Okay, so. The, and what I was looking at was the structure of this first little bit of it. And in particular, I was expecting to see that starting sequence. And that means something and tells me what kind of file this is um, and what format it's in. Okay. But uh, so what I've done, right, is this file is just a gigantic binary number, right? It's just a sequence of ones and zeros. That's not particularly useful. To, to look at it that way. So I told this program called Hexdump, hey, read me the file and display it each byte at a time and do so in hex decimal, okay? And so I can see that the very first byte of the file is 7F, okay? Uh, let's figure out what pattern goes with 7F, okay? What bit pattern, okay? Does that sound okay? And then the rest of it, I mean, right, it's just, it, as far as y'all maybe are concerned, this is just a bunch of random numbers. There's actually structure there, but we'll just take 7F as a as an example, okay? All right, so let's go back to the iPad. Okay, so let's take 7F. Um, it also doesn't matter if you do lower or uppercase F. Um, they mean the same thing, okay? Uh, and there's not really a whole lot of consistency. I tend to use uppercase when I type or write these, but not always is that the case on the computer. So just, yeah, whatever. Okay, so if I want to figure out, well, what value does this represent in base 10? So basically, I need to do the reverse process of what we just did up, up above with 728, okay? So what do I have here? I have my 16 to the zeroth position, so my ones place. Okay. And so I just need to say, all right, well, this is equal to 7 times 16 to the first plus F times 16 to the zero. Right? That's the exact same way that you decoded 1832. 1,000 to 800 and so on. It's just what's the base this time? 16. Okay. So what is 7 times 16 to the first? Well, whatever. Let me just, I'm lazy, so I'll just do calculator. 112. Okay. What is F times 16 to the zero? Well, what is 16 to the zero first off? 1. Okay, so this is just F, and what is F? 15. And so we get 127. Okay. And in binary, what would this be? Well, what is 7 in binary? And F is 1111. Okay, so hexadecimal 7F is equivalent to binary, okay? And if I want to write something in binary, uh, how do I tell you that I've written in binary? Well, I could write a subscript of the word two, T-W-O, or uh, on the computer, one that's pretty common is you prefix it with zero B instead of zero X, yes. Ah, because hexadecimal, okay? Uh, so the other way we know is how many different symbols are we using for our digits? 16 of them, right? Uh, and so base 10 is called base 10 because we have 10 digits, right? That it, it's all the same uh, counting or number, yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. So, um, so this is how we can convert back and forth between these things. Okay, um, 
and uh, it will take you guys a minute, right? Like, how do I know that seven is zero one 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 one? Well, I have it, maybe you have to think. Okay, are there any eights and seven? No, can't do that. Are there any fours and seven? Yeah, there's one of them. How much is left over? Three. How many twos go into three? One. With how much left over? And then there's your one. Okay. So you go through that process mentally, and with the hexadecimal ones in particular, eventually you don't have to think about it. It just becomes sort of automated. Um, that will come with time and practice, okay, um, as you guys get used to, to using this, okay? Um, okay, so we're we good with this idea, yeah? Okay. So the, the next thing, and we'll, we'll pick up with this uh, uh, more on Wednesday, is uh, to kind of think about how big of a number can I write down? So let's go back to 1832. It's not all that big of a number. Okay, if I wanted to write a bigger number, what would I have to do? Just keep going with more digits, right? Is there any limit to how many digits I can write down? There's no mathematical limit, right? There's certainly a practical limit, like if you ask me to write down 31 million digits, that's a lot of digits, right? How long would that take you, by the way? We actually computed it earlier this morning. I didn't pick 31 out of a hat. How many seconds are there in a year? It's 31 million, blah, 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 right? Or how many of you guys uh, did rent in high school, right? Huh? 86,400, how's the song go? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, right? Okay. Um, so, um, yeah, so there's 31 million seconds. So if I wrote one digit per second for an entire year, I'd get a 31 million digit number. Okay, which is eh, it's pretty big. But mathematically, there's no, no limit to this, right? Practically, there is. Okay. On a computer, things are a little bit different. Okay. In order for a computer to de properly decode a number, we have to s decide in advance how many bits or how many digits we're allowed to use. Okay. And this would be like, let's say, in everyday, you know, uh, human affairs, we said, okay, digits, you can have 32 of them. It's a lot of digits, right? But in a sense, it's also not, right? Uh, you know, particularly if you're measuring like, oh, I don't know, the, the uh, economics of the entire world, right? If you think about all the dollars, right, you might start getting close to that big of a number. But on a computer, we have to decide in advance how many bits are we going to use for things, okay? Let's say 32 bits, okay? Perfectly good number. Um, so, so let me go back for a second. If I say you may have 8 bits, how many different numbers or different bit patterns are there? If you've got 8 bits, you can have how many total different patterns? with eight bits, it's much bigger than eight. Well, this would be the same question. I give you eight coins and I ask you to flip them. How many different possible combinations are there of all of those eight coin flips? It's two to the eighth, right? Two to the eighth happens to be 256. Okay, great. So. With 8 bits, you can encode 256 different things. That could be the numbers from 0 through 255, or it could be minus 128 up through 127. And it's 127, not 128, because you've got to count 0 in the middle. Okay. Uh, okay, that's not a whole lot of numbers, right? And early computers, for example, from the 1980s, that's the arithmetic system that they worked in, 8 bits. Okay, they, they took things eight bits at a time. Okay, now let's contrast that with sort of modern systems uh, where they're either six, or sorry, 32 or 64 bits. 
uh, arithmetic system. Okay, and let's take 32 bits just as a, uh, for sake of example. How many different things could I encode? How many different patterns would there be if I had 32 bits? Well, how am I going to compute that? 2 to the 32, right? Whatever that number is, okay? It happens to be like 4.2 billion or something, okay? Pretty big number, but not really all that big. Okay, and let's say that I want to include some negatives in there. So I'll split half of them positive, half of them negative, and I'll show you how that works on Wednesday. So I can have basically two and a half or two point one ish billion positive numbers. Zero, one, two, three, and so on. Okay? Seems okay. Uh all right. I'm gonna ask you guys a question that's gonna have seemingly nothing whatsoever to do with what I was just saying. How many of you guys watch videos on YouTube? And everybody's hands should be going up because you should be saying, oh, yes, Dr. McKinney, we all watch your lovely recordings from class on YouTube. Thank you for providing them. And we've all mashed that subscribe and like button uh, and, and hit the bell so that you're notified when I post new things. Yeah, you've all done that? Oh, my streaming empire is not off to a good start, right? Okay, so what does 32 bits have to do with YouTube? Well, how many of you guys have watched music videos on YouTube? Okay, like what music videos maybe have you watched? Nobody wants to admit to which music videos you've been watching. No? How many of you guys have watched the Gangnam Style uh, music video on YouTube, right? You know sexy lady, you know, that whole thing, right? That video broke YouTube, okay? And the reason it broke YouTube is because they were using 32 bits to encode the play count. And they needed to be able to also encode negative play counts because, for example, uh, let's say that you detect a bot has watched it 10,000 times, but you know it's a bot, not a real person, and they're just trying to, like, you're not going to give people ad revenue for a robot that's not actually going to do anything. So you might need to deduct from the play count in, in if that happened. Okay, so 32 bits allows you to encode up through 2.1 whatever billion. Well, that's a lot of people watching the Gangnam Style video, but that happened. It got that many play counts. And what happened when it hit that maximum number and you added one more? That actually represented negative 2.1 billion. It wrapped around. And that was a real problem because suddenly it was like the Gangnam Style video owed YouTube a gajillion dollars rather than YouTube owing them a gajillion dollars. Right? Okay, so what they have to do instead, they had to recode everything and say, okay, fine, we're going to use... 64-bit numbers, okay? Now, that may seem, what's the biggest number you can encode with 64 bits? Well, 2 to the 64 is the number of things you can do. So let's calculate. Okay. Let's go over to my favorite thing. Let's go into Wolfram Alpha. And I'll deal with that later. Okay, so... Uh, it's actually going to be 2 to the 63, okay, minus 1 is the no the maximum number of play counts using the 64-bit scheme. Okay, why 63 instead of 64? Because I'm lopping off half of them for negatives, okay? And why the minus 1? Well, what's the biggest number you could encode um, – well, I have to basically count that I'm starting at zero, okay? So that's why I need to subtract one. Okay, so that number is there. Okay, nine quintillion, blah, 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 blah. That's a pretty big number, right? How many times would we have to watch... Uh, we'd have to watch the Gangnam Style video that many times to break YouTube again. Okay, challenge accepted. You think we could do it? All right. So for my next trick, and this is one of the reasons I love Wolfram Alpha, let's take that number.
and divided by the population of the Earth. Okay? So every person on the entire planet would each have to watch the Gangnam Style video 1.18 billion times for us to break YouTube again. Well, break the play counter. It's kind of a crazy big number, isn't it? Yeah, and that's only 64 bits, right? It's crazy huge. So, um, yeah. Okay, so, uh, so what's the point of this? Uh, the, the point is that we're going to have to pick in advance some specific number of bits that we'll use to encode, okay? And the, the usual patterns for this are, eight or maybe 16 or maybe 32 or maybe 64. We, we use all of them in different contexts and we'll, we'll talk about that as we, we continue. Um, okay, now the last thing, and we'll, we'll revisit this idea later, but I just wanna kind of prime the pump, so to speak. Um, can you guys think of a number, X, so that when you add it to itself, you get zero? Think of a number, when you add it to itself, you get zero. What number definitely solves that problem? Zero. Are there any other numbers that have that property? No. Okay, and the reason is that the arithmetic system we use, is there any upper limit on the number that you can represent? No, you can just keep adding more digits. Okay. Let's change the system and say there is an upper limit on the number you can represent, okay? Um, so let me take the clock, for example, as, uh, just for demonstration. Okay, humor me and let's pretend that instead of the 12, it, it, a zero was written there, okay? Um, is there any number on the clock so when you add it to itself, you get zero? Well, zero still works, right? But six also works now. Six plus six is zero, okay? So this kind of uh, arithmetic, it's more like a circle than it is like a big long line, okay? And in circular arithmetic, okay, or sometimes we call this modular arithmetic, that's actually the language or the, the arithmetic that a computer is doing, okay? So when I said uh, earlier that when the Gangnam Style video hit two point whatever billion, and it added one, it rolled over to negative two point whatever billion, that's because this counting system is actually circular, not linear, okay? Um, and that rollover would be like, let's say I asked you what's 11 plus two on the clock. It would be one, not 13, okay? Uh, well, even though it really should be 13 because 24 hour time is superior, right? But, okay, you guys get the idea? So, that's a little weird that there's this second answer to the question of a number to adding to itself to get zero. And there are only two then within a particular uh, number of, of bits or digits, okay? All right, so we'll start talking about how do we encode negatives and because the system is not what you'd think, it's kind of clever. Um, and I'll show you a magic trick to, to motivate that at the beginning of class on Wednesday. Okay, um, be on the lookout for new stuff on Canvas and uh, the X instructions for the next circuit or the, the last circuit thing that you guys will do. Um, and uh, I'll get that posted this afternoon and enjoy lunch.